can't see what I'm eating, but they can see me eating. They make me dollar. Hi guys, welcome to our channel. My name's Emma. And I'm Olivia. And today we are going to be doing a mukbang. So you can't really see mine because <laughs> I made a um, Rugged Mama style like vegetable ramen. So I've got onions and mushrooms and things like that. And then you've got... I've got nachos, <coughs> so I've just got the cool Doritos, melted mm. cheese, and I have sour cream. I couldn't have salsa because there is none, so I'm mm. kind of mad about that. And I don't like guac, so... Oh, I've got. Um, I sound very ill because I'm losing my voice. Is it just me, or when you make nachos, do you only put the cheese on the top layer? Or do you put cheese throughout? Because it's really annoying me I how there's only... I think you're supposed to put it throughout, but I know yeah, cause when I wasn't vegan, I used to put yeah, it on top. Yeah, it's really annoying me how there's only cheese on the top layer, because mm. now I'm at the bottom, I'm like... Just keep so, so today, we're going to be discussing an unsolved um, an occurrence and it's, it's pretty, it's like, there's I no explanation no for it. it. Yeah, I haven't told Ella. I was doing my research. I've watched a YouTube video about it before. I think a couple of people have covered it. But I don't think you've ever heard about it. Mm. But if you have, then we can still discuss the theories. But, so basically you're going to tell me about it and I'll say my opinion and stuff. Yeah, we can discuss what you think. Mm -hmm. So, I'm... Mm. So the story begins in uh, January 31st, 1959. So it's quite an old story. And there's not much, like, evidence that's still um, valid because it's so old. And we've already just oh, to my What did that? <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'm going to really butcher the name. I think it's pronounced, the case is called... Um, the harrowing mystery of the Dyatlov past incident. It's a place in Russia. Um, I'm not going to mention names because I definitely get them like really bad. But basically, nine Soviet college students were killed under mysterious circumstances while hiking through the Ural Mountains, which is now known as the Dyatlov past incident. So basically. Um, they were ex uh, they were experienced hikers, and they were never seen alive. None of them were ever seen alive again after this incident, right? Right, they're going into triangle. Mm. No, because their bodies were found. Oh, well, well, well. yeah, I'll explain. On February the first, they began the hike, um, and it's it's known as a very hard hike. Like they went a very treacherous route. The mountain that they were hiking on. Is actually known as Dead Mount, the Dead Mountain. Why? Why would you go up a mountain called Dead Mountain? I don't know. I think they just wanted to. They were asking to die. No, it's not. It's not common for people to die on it. Or anything. It's been known for people to die there. That's probably why. Yeah. But they weren't experienced hikers. Mm -hmm. um, I have the lemon syrup. No, I don't really like it that much. It's just medicine. -y. The reason that they even were discovered like missing or like in trouble. So before embarking, they basically told people obviously about it and when they were going to return. But they didn't hear anything from them. There's no communication. So the people like that they knew, family and friends, uh, got a search party to try and find them. I'm guessing it's probably like other experienced people. Mm -hmm. So the volunteer rescue force, oh, it's a volunteer one, so I'm guessing it's family and friends. Mm -hmm. they, they trek through the... Same hiking path. They found the campsite, but none of the hikers. So the army um, and police investigators, because obviously they need quite specialised people, because it was really, it was really low temperature, so it was quite dangerous. Maybe they froze to death. Oh um, yeah, but um, no, no, they find the bodies. Theory. I'll tell you. No, no, I'm gonna talk about theories after. The rescuers, well, the search her team weren't very um, like positive about it. Basically, they thought they were dead. Yeah, kind of, because there was no communication, mm. campsite was abandoned, it was cold. They, they were expecting to find bodies, but they didn't think they would find them the way they did, mm -hmm. right? The bodies were found, but the state that they were found in raised even more questions rather than what they started with. Like, it just raised alarm bells and everything. So when they arrived at the campsite, the first thing the investigators noticed is that the tent, I don't know how they know this, but somehow they figured it out, the tent had me cut one of the tents at the campsite that the... Um, Hikers went there. It had been cut from the inside, pardon me, open. 
So instead of it being from the outside in, yeah. it's not like someone tried to break into their tent. They tried to break, they tried out. To break out. But what would scare them so much? As that, like in the, in the cold, middle of the night in the cold. So you'd want to stay in the dark. In. Yeah, that's like your comfort, like your mm. tent. Why, for what reason would they cut out of their tent? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, and it, that was quite scary. Like, what made them? Why would they cut it? Right. They that's what I mean. Like, exactly to destroy their equipment is a last, a last resort. So, what made them mm. cut their tent? Do you know what I mean? It's so crazy because no one will ever know. No, it's really frustrating. They're really, like, and because it's such a long time ago, there's not much they can go on. Yeah, so that's what they realised. First of all, most of the belongings um, had been left there, including shoes. Bear in mind, the first thing to get frostbite is probably your toes yeah. or fingers. So the fact that they didn't even have time to put shoes and uh, gloves and that on. Mm. They're trying to get away from. They're them. really weird. Yeah. Um, the footprints that they found of the nine people. I think it was. Not, I don't know. It was nine or eight. I'm pretty sure it was nine, but when it said eight, so. Sorry. Oh no, it is eight. So eight. Oh, eight or nine. That oh my god, it's loaded. Loaded. You have it. Um. Yeah, the footprints of the hikers, uh, they found the sets of footprints, but it was quite clear that it wasn't with shoes, it was footprints with either socks or yeah. no shoes. So that was obviously really bad. And they led to a trail almost a mile away from the camp in the woods, across edge, under a large cedar tree. They found the remains of a small fire. But I don't know if it was still lit or if it had been, I'm guessing it had been put out because yeah. of the weather. And the first two bodies, which I won't, can't pronounce the two names. <laughs> two of the hikers. Despite the temperatures of minus 13 to minus 22 on the night of their deaths, both men's bodies were found shoeless and wearing only underwear. What? Yeah, right? I know, it's weird. Gets weirder. Experienced hikers wouldn't do that unless it was necessary. Mm. Then they found the next three bodies who had died on their way back to the camp from the fire, like, Fire, but um, not fireplace was the word. Fire pit. Mm -hmm. Fire that had been under the tree. They start to make, make the way they think. They start to make their way back to the camp. Maybe they were just all really drunk and went on a mad one. Mm hmm. We had to wait till the, the rest of it though. You talk about your theories and my theories. Mm. But it's, I don't know. So while circumstances are a bit odd, nothing, um, but it was quite clear that they'd all perished or died from hypothermia, mm -hmm. obviously. Probably caused by their lack of clothing and everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, their bodies showed no indication of severe external damage. So no, like, foul play or being attacked. Um, so they were the first five bodies, but it wasn't until a few months later that the other four of the hikers were found. Oh, really? buried under a lot of snow mm -hmm. and that, this is what caused most of the mystery so i'm pretty sure because when i watched the, i've watched a video on this i'm pretty sure the whole thing happened quite near to a russian military base so there's theories about that so when they discovered they discovered them in a ravine under 75 meters of snow mm -hmm. oh wait hang on how did they discover them under the snow in a ravine 75 meters deeper into the woods oh. than the cedar okay so a little ravine under yeah. Um, but they, their bodies um, told a completely different story to the that of the other ones that were found. Because the other ones were like, ah, oh, fair enough. It's still a bit weird how they're cut out of the tent, yeah. but... And how they were in underwear. Mm. But fair enough, they don't have hypothermia. It's kind of a given. Three of the four hikers that were found um, had suffered significant skull damage before die, death, moments before their death. Uh, one of them had major chest fractures that could only have been caused by immense force that has been said that it couldn't be caused by a human. It was to, is comparable to that of a car crash. Oh my god. And the most gruesome one was one of them miss, was missing her tongue, her eyes and part of her lips, as well as some of her fa facial tissue and part of her skull, or skull bone. Oh my god. And yeah, there's people that say, oh, that's a hypothermia can cause your yeah. eyes to, like, decompose but your, your your tongue it just doesn't make sense um yeah like you know when you see frozen fish that eyes haven't deteriorated like mm -hmm. they're still there like it, usually hypothermia will preserve like and the comfort preserve stuff rather than make it 
decompose because like the heat would decompose it so it's not very likely that it was the cold that caused her things to be cut out the other body called alexander something something uh was in the same location but without any wounds so it's a bit weird because they all suffered the same hit because there's, there's a theories of an avalanche um why wouldn't they all have different or why wouldn't they all have severe injuries he didn't actually no. that makes sense if it was an avalanche yeah. because that would make That's sense the cutting out of the tent the running with no shoes on you know what I mean, that doesn't mm. make sense, but then it doesn't make sense why half her tongue is missing mm. if it was an avalanche. Yeah, so the second group of bodies suggested that the hikers had died at distinctly, at distinctly different times to the first group that I explained. They appeared to have been making use of the clothes from the people that had died before them, so there's a different timeline. So the, the first group that I explained by the cedar tree and everything, they died first because the second group had their clothes on oh. and it'd been obvious that they'd tried to use them to yeah. keep warm. So it's different times that they died. Oh, so they did die with their clothes on then? The other two. Oh, barely clothed, but yeah. they tried to make use of what they could. Mm -hmm. No shoes and socks, but Most maybe of them to leave that legs. On. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that really made me jump. The dog just saw a squirrel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of their feet was wrapped in a piece of um, the other person's uh, pants, like wool pants, suggesting they had taken them after she died, as it was originally belonging to the other pa yeah. um, passenger, the other. Um, so Early on, many Soviets um, suspected that students' deaths were the result of an ambush by the local tribesmen. A sudden attack would account for the way the hikers fled their tents. Let me let my dog out. She's crying like a little baby. Oh, there's so unattractive people being up many Who cares? Yeah, the way that the, the hikers fled up the tents and things like that would explain maybe an ambush from their tribesmen. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, um, and the damage done to the second group of bodies could have been like their attack, whatever. But it, this doesn't really make sense because they were very peaceful, these tribesmen. They just asked them anyway. Yeah, they probably interviewed them and stuff. Local people. But they're well known to be quite peaceful. Yeah. And the evidence didn't support violent human conflict. And also the, the impact of that head injury of one of the uh, hikers said to have been like a car crash like too much for it to be mm -hmm. human which is weird and that yeah the damage done to the bodies exceeded um, blunt force trauma, trauma one human could inflict on another and there's no evidence of any other footprints of any other people on the trail apart from the hikers themselves obviously investigators then conceived maybe it could have been avalanche oh, whoops um, the sound of the snow collapsing and early warning could have like made them cut out the tents. Yeah. And, um, in a state of undress and sudden sprinting for the tree line. But it still doesn't make sense. Like, why can they just unzip the tent? If you're frantic, right? Yeah, why you just have a grab? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, an avalanche would also have been powerful enough to inflict the injuries that killed the second group of um, students with all the head trauma in the chest. Oh, so that. maybe they escaped the avalanche. Mm. And then run on, but then yeah, but no, but they must have been killed from the avalanche if it, it was an avalanche because they had the most impact mm. on it. The first group died of hyperthermia, um, supposedly. Um, the first group wasn't injured. No, that was really That's weird. Strange. I know, but the controversy um, was big on this uh, theory because what would the experienced hikers have made a camp in the spot that was vulnerable to an avalanche? Number one. Yeah. Um. The fact that investigators found the bodies, they noted no evidence that an avalanche had occurred um, any time recently in the region. Because they must have been like geological probably experts that like yeah. would be able to tell if an avalanche had occurred. That how the snow fell or whatever. Wouldn't there be like, I don't know if this sounds stupid, but wouldn't there be like more snow and stuff? Or would mm. That's what I mean. That's they probably would tell. Yeah. But also there's never been any avalanches recorded in that area ever. So it's a bit weird for it to be a one-off. Yeah. There's no signs of it, so... Maybe they thought there was going to be one, I don't know. I don't know. That theory got quite quickly debunked. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I should have done? I should have put the, my mint on this as well, with the cheese. Oh, my God. And so another theory is some try to explain that the hiker's strange um, behaviour is to do with lack of clothing and the hypothermia because irrationality is a common um, effect or early sign of hypothermia. Yeah. 
bit delusions. Hypothermia does explain why the hikers left their warm tents in a panic for the frigid world of um, the cold outside in the first place. I know all the theories and you tell me what you think. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Investigators believe that maybe they had an argument um, and the deaths were from an argument among the group. So that could explain the lack of clothes, but people knew the ski group were largely harmonious, so they didn't argue. Yeah. Well, they really put themselves at risk of an argument, do you know what I mean? And they would have been they wouldn't have been able to um, inflict the damage that was recorded of the injury. There's some supernatural um, really? theories, yeah. So with humans quite largely ruled out as culprits of the attack or the event, some began to uh, think that non-human um, entities caused this. Or an animal. Like a well, bear. No, imagine, yeah, that's what I was going to say, what about a bear, but I don't know if they live in that climate. I think they might be new. I don't know, yeah. People um, began to think they were killed by a thing called a mank, which is a Russian yeti. <laughs> Bigfoot. I've seen that. I love Bigfoot, it's so good. Or Smallfoot. Oh my god, Bigfoot! Small foot. But small Bigfoot foot. was nice. No, no. Well, was he, he isn't Bigfoot, it's just the Smallfoot. So he's just was normal. he nice? Yeah. By the way, that's disgusting cold, so. I love that for me. <laughs> so, yeah. So they think it could have been like a yeti that caused all the injury. Pretty silly. So another thing that I missed out was that they found radiation on the clothes and the bodies of the people. Radiation, what? right? So this led to theories um, that they may have killed, been killed by some radioactive weapon. Yeah. That is strange. Yeah. So. Who favor, the, those who favour this idea stress that the strange appearance of the bodies at their funerals, the corpses have a slightly orange withered cast. The radiation being the had the radiation been the cause of the death, more than the modest levels would have been registered and the bodies examined. So they didn't have enough radiation to suspect that it was that that killed them. Yeah. Because surely if it killed them, it would have been right, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really weird that there's not enough. Uh, they think that it could be possible that um, a military weapon is too intriguing to resist. Some say that ski hiking team was unfortunate enough to stumble onto the USSR, which I'm guessing is some sort of Russian military base. Yeah. The testing um, of a type of uh, weapon may maybe um, knew too much, or maybe they stumbled onto it and it killed them all, but... I still wouldn't explain why they're naked. And why they're separate. Mm -hmm. This explanation is popular because it partially is supported by the testimony of another hiking group. One camping 50 kilometres from the Dietilov Pass team on the same night, the other group spoke of strange orange orbs floating in the sky. A sight um, of the theory interprets as distant, distant explosions. So, a hypothesis goes that the sound of the um, explosions or conclusions Drove the hikers um, from their tents in a panic, half clothed, half died of hypothermia within quite quickly. <coughs> While attempting to take shelter from the blast by waiting near the tree line, makes sense. The second group, having seen the first group freeze, determined to go back for their belongings, but fell victim to hypothermia too. While the third group got caught in a fresh blast um, into the forest and died from their injuries. I suspect one of, the chief, <laughs> one of the chief investigators said that um, at, they, they suspect at the time they are sure that these bright flying spheres had a direct connection to the group's death. And that was the chief investigator at the time. Really? Yeah. So that's basically all the theories. Sorry, I've been reading from my phone. It's just a lot of information to remember. Um, as this is our first like, story time, kind of. I, I watch like, other YouTubers that do this kind of thing where they bang in there. Um, talk about really weird cases or true crime stuff. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think happened? What's your theory? I have no clue. <laughs> it's it's really weird. I don't know. It's really strange. No, like maybe they could have been ambushed by like someone that escaped. You never know. Their bodies were found months later. It would have given like the attacker a lot of time to get away. Like they could have had like a car, weapons. You don't know. There's no car tracks. No other footprints. Oh, yeah. I don't know because it's it's the, it's it's contradictory. Because <coughs> when you say what theory, 
there's always a thing that debunks it, like, oh, it can't have been that because this, mm -hmm. but then you think, oh, maybe it could be that, but it can't be that's because of that. I have no idea. Right. I honestly have no idea. I'm literally, I feel baffled. The avalanche <laughs> is probably quite, uh, quite probable, but then it doesn't, the injuries is what throws no, you yeah, off, and it made you active. Yeah, maybe it is to do with the Milky Way. Could be. But then they would have investigated it, wouldn't they? Mm. Let's do the government, they're really sketchy about that kind of stuff, wouldn't they? They probably try to keep it hush hush. Yeah, that's true. So, there's a lot of people think it's government. I'm, st I'm starting to not be able to taste anything. Why? Are you so full? How could it's you know? Oh, how's it going to let it? You should have drank it hot because it is disgusting cold. Try it. This is so damn good. That's what you had? Mm. Yeah, it must be my house. It is. I'm not going to want to drink this. It's good for your cold. And it has paracetamol in it. Oh, don't really care. I just filled up on my stomach as well, it's so hard. But it's, it's lukewarm. Now I've just drank lemonade, it tastes... <laughs> I'm not even being dramatic, I really don't really care. I can't drink that. So I think... I don't know if you actually think about it. <laughs> I thought about it, but know. I just don't know. I think the fact that... I think it's to do with the government, and mm. it's, it's like some sort of testing of something. And then they wouldn't want that out there if it was true, would they? No, exactly. Yeah. That's why it's a bit sketchy. And like the fact that they had things missing, maybe mm. someone tried to get killed. But the eyes, it's just weird. I don't know. And it wouldn't be like an animal because they're usually in hibernation in the winter. And there was no print. There was no animal prints or anything like that. Mm. If I was that investigator, I'd be so frustrated. Mm. By the way, guys, that sounded like a fight. It wasn't. It's all chairs running together. When you try and make the noise again. This work. <laughs> so that concludes our little mystery uh, video. Um, if you do like this kind of video, we want I want to do more of it. It's like a mm -hmm. chatty kind of. Next time I'm gonna find one and yeah. tell Olivia about it. Yeah. And not, not tell me until the video. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I just think that's a really strange story. Um, and I really enjoy like just like sitting down and like chatting about things. Like I love true. But I bet if you search on a far probably you've seen it. Yeah, that's that's a problem. I still discuss it with you, and like, you know. Thank you for watching, guys. We will see you in our next video, which will be up on either on Wednesday or Sunday, depending on which when we upload. By the way, thanks for forty subscribers. Oh yeah, no, one forty-one. <gasps> forty-one. Yeah, but that, we're doing it in ten. So like, thanks for forty subscribers. Our next goal is fifty. Okay, so thanks for our forty subscriber mark. Um, our aim is fifty by the end of the year. Yeah, so thank you for watching. We will see you in our next video. Uh, yeah. Bye, guys. To say? Have you got anything else to say? Bye, producer. Bye. 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 Oh, my God. I won't make it easy for you now.